Welcome to Derailed Podcast. Last episode I said it was episode 15, even though it was episode 16. Looks like I can't get anything right. I might as well go home and get teenage... Wait, I fucked that up. (laughs) And get... (laughs) I might as well go home and get teen pregnant. (laughs) Hold it there, cheat cuss mando. You just made uh, inappropriate uh, peer to teen... Or is it teen to peer choice behavior? (laughs) Inappropriate peer to teen choice behavior. (laughs) (laughs) Oh... So you, that was the one that you were telling me to watch, uh, and this I did. One of my favorites. And I, I remember, like, the second I started watching, I remembered that that was one I played on, like, loop as a kid. Introduce the subject and we'll talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Derailed Podcast Episode 17, unless I uh, delay the episode by seven months and record several mini-episodes in between, like I did with the last one. <laughs> No, I won't do that again. Um, Sorry, Olivia. Today we're going to talk about Home Star Runner, a very, very old internet icon (laughs) Um, that's oddly enough still kind of around to some extent. And today joining me, a returning guest, introduce yourself. Hello, I am Matt from Matt Presents. I do that show, Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. Yes. And two or three other shows, but that's the one I'm most known for. He also makes videos where he swears at VeggieTales. This is true. Yes. <laughs> I think I've mentioned VeggieTales more times on, like, your channels than my own. Maybe. Uh, maybe. I know we talked about it on the, dera- uh, on the la- last time you were on Derailed, but I feel like most of it's just, like, conversations we have that aren't recorded. <laughs> Well, I talked about it on The Last Derailed, and I talked about it on that Scribble episode of DuckCast. That is true. here we are talking about it again. I'm pretty sure I've only mentioned it twice on my channel. Yeah, so anyways, today's topic, VeggieTales. Um, Yes. Um, In VeggieTales, one of the characters says he's going to get teen pregnant. Yes. And then Bob the Tomato comes in and says, hold it right there. (laughs) Homestar Runner, I, I mean... How long was this website up? I know, like, the first book was made in, like, 1996, but how long was the website up? I think the website started around 2000. The the copyright on the main page says 2000. Okay, so that's probably it. I, uh, watched... I found this website. Someone showed it to me when I was a kid. You know, this is before YouTube... This is probably around the time of Newgrounds. I don't. I forget. I forget exactly when Newgrounds went live, but before YouTube, I would watch a lot of Newgrounds and Homestar. And Homestar Runner was basically its own thing. Uh, Homestar Runner is like when it comes to just like series, is very standout and unique. Yes, I think it predates Newgrounds by a little, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you weren't watching Newgrounds before Homestar. Um, yeah. I discovered in, like, fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade, yeah. like, one of the kids in my class was watching it at school, and I'm like, hey, what's this? Oh, it's Homestar Runner, and... Homestarrunner.net. Homestarrunner.net. It's dot com. <laughs> I started watching it, um, was very, very into it, um, have close friends, that I made because we both liked Homestar Runner. <laughs> uh, my, my friend James, who's been in a lot of my videos, he uh, did the theme song for Matt's Fun Time Bad Movie Show. We uh, we were in Boy Scouts together, and we first started talking because we were both into Homestar Runner. I had, like, a near encyclopedic knowledge of Homestar Runner. When I, <laughs> I was, like, obsessed with it. So, like, even to this day, I can recall, like, very obscure references. Yeah. I, um, I really like, I really liked it when I was a kid. I don't know if I can say I was, like, flat out obsessed with it, but I would spend hours, on, whenever I remembered that it existed, I would go on the website. It was still kind of fairly new, so there would normally be something new on the website, whether it be a strong bad email or one of the shorts. The tunes, the lengthy tunes did not come out that often. I think there might not even be 20 of them. Like, listed. Maybe there is. The tunes are kind of weird, though, because some of the shorts, like, stuff on the shorts page is just as long <laughs> as some of the tunes. It's, uh, 
a well-organized website for the most part, but just what qualifies as a big tune and what qualifies as a short. It's kind of weird. Plus, a lot of the holiday episodes are just, like, big shorts, but because they're holidays, they're not put on that page. Yeah. Halloween seems to be the thing that the what they enjoyed doing the most because that's the thing that's, like, still alive to this day. Oh, yeah. I, I liked the Halloween episodes a lot. Same. Uh, and I mean, like, as a kid, I didn't get every reference, and it's sort of interesting going back to now, because they reference some, like, obscure stuff, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. I know what that's from. Yeah. Pom Pom was dressed as Michael Moore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and he was, uh, fuck, uh, John, John Goodman's character from Big Lebowski. Yep. Um, I, it's fun going back. I told you this before st- we hit record. It's fun, like, looking at some of the newer ones where the costumes have kind of also been modern, become more modern, like, with uh, Grunkle Stan, the character from Scribble Knots. Yeah. I like that Coach Z was always a rapper, and, and one of the more recent ones, he was Parappa the Rapper. I think, I think I drew fan art of Coach Z as Parappa the Rapper before he <laughs> was ever Parappa the Rapper. Oh, wow. I I predicted that one. Matt Presents Predicts the Future. Top ten times Matt Presents Predicted the Future. (laughs) Yeah, it's just, it's very unique because, like, one, it's one of the earliest flash, flash shows on the internet. Probably not the first one, but it's one of the earliest. And it's probably, it probably is the longest running series online. I mean, I can't think of anything else. I, mean, I at least can't, I really can't think of anything else that's been around as long as it. I guess that depends on what you count as running. Because I mean, there's huge hiatuses. Yeah, but there's it, a it, lot I, of gaps in there. But yes, technically, if you count from their first cartoon they posted to modern day, where they're still releasing videos occasionally. Yeah, probably the longest running thing on the internet. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it is kind of fair to like not want to count because there's like a six year hiatus where nothing happened actually maybe only four because there was one thing that got put up in 2010 and then i think their comeback was 2014 where they temporarily made stuff again only for like a very short period of time and then it kind of just became like an annual thing with like april fools or halloween yeah nowadays it's like halloween every year and then sometimes christmas or um april fools or rather december ween and april fools yeah, rewatching these, you know, like, because me and you were talking about it a few days ago, and that's what led us to wanting to do this. I had, there was definitely stuff I recalled from a lot of them. I was, like, quoting stuff from Bug in the Mouth. Yes. Bug in the Mouth disease, because that's, like, probably my favorite. That's probably my favorite one, honestly. I, I, I don't, maybe, maybe not, but it's, it's one that I found the most quotable. It was one that I had the easiest time remembering. Um, and even rewatching that one, I pretty much still had the whole thing down. But l- watching a b- bunch of the old ones again, they are pretty funny, honestly. I would say they hold up. Yeah, they have a very strange sense of humor. Where they'll, like... They'll, like, lampoon something and then just, like, reference every element of it. <laughs> in the most illogical way. They had a Clockwork Orange reference in the <laughs> Jorb episode. Where they're trying to teach, uh... Coach Z, how to speak properly, or just say, not even really speak properly, just say the word job right. <laughs> and then Strong Set has a tape where he says the word sad like 250,000 times because he was studying the dictionary and that's the only explanation he gives. <laughs> that was something that he didn't make for Coach Z, that was something that he already had. <laughs> the characters are so fucking absurd. That's the best part of the yeah. show. It's just how wacky the characters are. Yeah, I, I found um, when I was younger, my favorites were like Strong Bad and Homestar, of course. And honestly, Strong Bad is probably like I, I think Strong Bad kind of took over the website. Yeah, like there is more of him than any character on the website. I mean, Strong Bad email basically became the series. It's because he's one of the more reasonable characters. His Homestar and all, all the other characters are really stupid. So it's like. How do we ground this series? 
all right, we'll give it to the one logical character. And I do think strong. I mean, Homestar, I, I, I think it's good that the website was still, like, named after him and everything, but, I mean, he does make a better main character than Homestar. I feel like with Homestar, just after a while, it gets irritating to listen to his voice. Uh, as much as I like the character. But just uh, rewatching it now, uh, way bigger fan of Strong's head than I was when I was younger. <laughs> I was always a big fan of Homsar and Sonora Card Gauge, because they just smoke mm. complete nonsense. Which characters? Homsar, the. Oh, yeah, I know Homsar. So- yeah, and uh, Sonora Card Gauge. It's like uh, who's the old, who's that? The old fat strong bad. Oh, I, I actually yeah, I know that character too. I forgot the name. I guess yeah, they seem to use him a lot more in like the more recent stuff too. I keep seeing him pop up more than I used than I'm used to seeing him. Yeah, Homstar was a character that was created exclusively because of some kid's typo, <laughs> and that's funny. Yeah, I get. This is gonna be such a dis like all over the pl- and that's fine. This is gonna be such an all over episode place episode because I just I don't even know where to start with this show. I don't know where to keep going. Yeah. It's just it's just recalling all of this stuff. There's a lot to and, talk about. Yeah, what do you think? Um, okay, so let's just do some basic questions. Uh, what do you think? I guess we'll just say like what, what's like your favorite and least favorite character first. Um, if you can think of one. Of, like, the main cast, or, like, of, of all the characters they've ever had? Uh, you can do either, or whatever you have the more to say about. I don't know, I, there's not really any characters I dislike. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, I like Tom Sawyer, I like Sonor Card Gage. I like the cheat, probably, of, like, the main like cast. The because... I like the cheat commandos a lot, too. <laughs> yes. That's, like... That's like peak Homestar comedy is Commandos in the Classroom, because it's like, <laughs> it's a parody of, like, the shitty peer pressure after-school specials they would show you, but, like, they try to cover every topic all at once, and their advice is just fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah. The first two are just kind of, like, bad advice of, like, how you approach talking to them and then the third one involves like getting really violent and shooting off guns and <laughs> it's like create a thick cloud of fa- of smog just to create a distraction <laughs> then open up fire on them and by the time reinforcements show up your mom should be there <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite probably is just strong bad as born as an answer that is like he's just kind of the yeah. main voice of it. I do really like the cheat. I think the only character I've never gotten that much out of, um, and I don't hate him per se, is the king. Oh, king of town. Um, yeah, king of town is the only one. Like, I don't, again, I don't like, I don't, it's not like he's annoying or anything. It's just, I think he's the only character I don't really get any laughs out of most of the time. It's just him talking about food or butter or something like that. It's just like, okay, I get it. <laughs> I found Marzipan a lot funnier the second time around. Yeah. Um, only other different voice actor in the entire series. Yeah, I, a lot of props gotta go to Matt Chapman for doing that many voices. Yeah. He voices nearly every character. Occasionally, And they all do sound different. They all sound different. Occasionally Mike would step in and voice a character, and you can kind of tell because all of Mike's characters sound exactly the same. It's just uh-huh. his normal speaking voice. Craig Zobel has voiced one or two characters, because Craig was one of the guys who wrote uh, the original storybook with Mike. So he's he's voiced one or two characters, but never anyone major. And also uh, the lead singer of They Might Be Giants was the Poop Smith in the 200th email. Yeah, I heard that's, that. That's like I, I the only that. guest voice they've ever had. Very pleasant singing voice. <laughs> yes. He was in Coraline, which you were just talking about last episode. What? Who did he voice in Coraline? He's he's the singing voice for the father. Got it. That's that's funny. I guess like Homestar is like I, I guess like these guys have now gone off to work on enough, enough like projects like with notoriety. I know they did Yo Gaba Gaba, um, which was just a sh- which actually was a children's show. But then you said that Matt was on uh, Gravity Falls. Matt Chapman worked on Gravity Falls. He was one of the writers and did some some voices for it. I can honestly um, see that. I could 
I could see that kind of like sense of humor yeah. from Homestar kind of being there a little bit. I, I think the most obvious example of it is the boy bands episode. Because the boy band is called Several Times, which is like a recurring joke on Homestar Runner. Oh, Char- really? Characters will just say like, several times. And, it's, <laughs> and then that got referenced in Gravity Falls. I did not know that, and that's amazing. <laughs> like, I could tell immediately, I'm like, that's a Matt Chapman <laughs> joke. This is a Homestar reference. I do see, like, Homestar get, like, referenced every once in a while. Often only on, like, YouTube stuff, but it always just, like, amazes me. Like, oh, wow, someone else who remembers that. I feel like so many people have at least come across it once. Yeah. Normally when I mention him, some people aren't, like, immediately jump into, like, referencing it, like me and you will. But they'll at least be like, yeah, I remember that. I feel like it was a very online thing for people our age. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got introduced it by from my cousins who enjoyed it, and I think I just, I ended up being the one who got, like, the most into it. I think, I'm pretty sure that no one in my family has thought about put, like, a second thought into Homestar Runner, but... Oh, yeah. No, but it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> my, my parents thought it was, like, the dumbest thing, but... <laughs> They think that about a lot of stuff I like. It's very creative, Homestar, though. It's amazing, like, how all these characters are all just... Pretty much every single one of them are just basic shapes. Like, Bubs and the and Coach Z especially. I get Pom Pom especially, but we don't even really... They don't really use Pom Pom too often. But, uh... But it's just... But they still... Like, they all still have, like, their own personality. Like, they're all... There's so much, like, personality to each character, despite, like, it just being the most basic of shapes for each of them. Yeah. And I like that they have these, like, weird cartoony characters, and they, like, follow through with the logic of it. Like, Homestar and Marzipan have, like, invisible arms. <laughs> they do. <laughs> and, like, like, there's even one where, like, Homestar is wearing a jacket, and, like, the, the sleeve of the jacket comes up as if he has an arm. <laughs> That's great. Let's go for the different, like, different categories on the website, you know, like, obviously there's the tunes, the shorts, the holidays, but then there's some, like, other stuff, like, there's Powered by the Cheat, Strong Bet Email, Teen Girl Squad, like, what what would you say your favorite, like, non-short part of the website? I feel like Strong Bet Email is gonna be, like, the probably be the answer that anyone would give, but... I I mean, Strong Bet Emails feels like the main part of the website yeah at some point that became the main thing they were known for i always liked the powered by the cheat stuff again just because it was like nonsense humor i i feel like homestar runner was very much a precursor to the lol random humor the internet would develop in the late 2000s Eh, mid 2000s and that's all true but i would say the character's personalities often played a big role in the humor too so it wasn't just like no, there I, was consistency in the show. Absolutely. Um, it wasn't just, like, the completely random bad shit that, like, I knew Grounds even was pretty popular for. They they did have consistent characters, but I, I still think there was, like, a slight element of absurdist humor to it. I would say that, yeah. for Oh, for sure. Definitely. I would say the two least consistent characters were Homestar and Marzipan, because they're, like supposed to be like friendly for most of it but both of them just randomly turn to jerks in certain episodes and i find that funny that's great no i i i love that like because this started as like a kid's book and then like even in the early stuff it's like kind of cliche and then like as the series went on the villain became the main character the hero became an idiot and like the hero and the love interest are constantly having relationship issues. <laughs> In one of the more recent Halloween episodes, <laughs> with Mr. I think it was Mr. Puffers or Poofers Must Die. Mr. Poofers Must Die. It opens with Homestar like just announcing he's going to break up with Mari's Pan. Says, "Oh no, that's not until next week." <laughs> what I'm supposed to tell you today? <laughs> yeah, to me, Mr. Poofers Must Die was good evidence that they still got it. <laughs> oh yeah. Because that was a funny episode. Yeah, I still like the the new stuff they put out. I don't feel like they've lost it that much. 
I feel like, I don't know, they were always really, really self-referential. I just, if it almost feels like more so recently, but maybe it's just because they have less recent stuff to be self-referential about. Yeah, I do like how um, they are very self-referential. Often when the Strong Bad emails like finally came back from hiatus, they would kind of acknowledge it. I like how in one of the most recent ones, though, and I say most recent ones, there's been like three in the last uh, ten years now. There's been like three. <laughs> And in one of the more, like, one of the three, it's just, like, him typing on his computer, let's not make a big, he's, like, doing one of his songs, let's not make a big deal out of this, <laughs> just checking my email. Because <laughs> it was, like, the first time people were seeing it in years, and it's just like, yeah, it's just going to be a pretty standard episode. <laughs> Which is good, it would be annoying if every single short that they did was just acknowledging how long it's been <laughs> since the last one. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's funny, because, like, some of their older stuff would, like, reference how long they'd taken between cartoons and it's like back then it was like three or four months now it's yeah. years at a time <laughs> <laughs> I like, yeah there's the one where they're coming back from like summer vacation i guess yeah and they're all clucking in <laughs> bubs has his fucking baloney sandwich, bologna sandwich car, car. <laughs> yeah that's another like bubs started off as just like random concession stand guy and now he's like super shady business practices. He runs, like, every business in town. <laughs> <laughs> They're all super shady characters. I saw, like, one of the, oh, again, so one of the modern episodes today, which was about just, like, Homestar thinking he murdered Pom Pom. One, it ends with him actually murdering Pom Pom. <laughs> and I don't... I, I, I assume that the character has come back ever since that short, but... But he does actually murder it. They actually do murder Pom Pom in that episode. But also, just like uh, every single character that Homestar brings it up to is perfectly cool with the fact that he just murdered him. Like, it's... Bubs and Coach Z offer him, like, a ways to cover up the crime. Yeah, like, Bubs and Coach Z imply they have murdered people. Yeah. Which is, like, some insane <laughs> shit. <laughs> Like, every character has committed multiple crimes. <laughs> well, one of my favorites, it was one of my favorites when I was a kid, and it's one of my favorites now, is the Strong Bad Goes to Jail cartoon, which is just literally the name of it. Yes. I love how blunt the titles are, too, where they just like say, yeah, this person worked on it, this person did the vocals... This is what the cartoon is called. But yeah, um, the cheat and strong bad commit one crime, and then it's like in their newspapers that crime has gone up significantly. <laughs> <laughs> and then their prison's just a cardboard box. But they still need strong mad to come and get them out. Yeah, strong mad has to like lift up the jail. <laughs> and then after they run off, he's like, I made a cake, and it has, like, a jackhammer in it. <laughs> it's amazing, this little world that they created. Oh, yeah. They do They do occasionally add characters, but they're normally, like, one-offs, you know? I guess Homstar and uh, the other character that I can't remember the name of. Sonor Card Gage. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hard name so, to remember. The, the introduction to Sonor Card Gage is weird, because, like... It was an email to Strongbad about, like, Hey, Strongbad, how will you... Will you still be cool when you're old? And he's like, yeah, I'll be cool. I'll just be a different type of cool. And he he describes this, like, fat, lumpy guy who, like, sleeps in an alleyway and walks around with a bag full of melty candy bars. <laughs> and... <laughs> and Strong Set shows up and he's like, You just described Sonor Card Gage. <laughs> it's like what Sonor card gauge is awesome it's like that guy gives me nightmares I guess there's like the str if you count strong bad email characters there is like the f I guess the computers are all different characters <laughs> yeah because there's the one where his, I watched rewatch this one where his two old computers kidnap the more recent one um and then the paper scroll is a character <laughs> that can interact scroll. they they made a joke in one video it, it was uh the montage video where it's like oh the paper lasted until strong bad email 174 where he retired and then like when email because th that was way before 174 and then when 174 happened they actually retired the paper <laughs> yeah it's like a cg thing now right 
Uh, yeah, there was New Paper for a while, who was... It made, like, a way worse noise than just the usual preow. <laughs> it, made, it was like... <sighs> and it kept, like, yeah. fucking up, like, the first episode it was in. It, like, showed up halfway through the video, and Strong Bad's like, No, 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 we're not done yet, go back up. It def- I, I haven't. I, I didn't rewatch all of them. Obviously, not. There's a fucking shitload of them. But, um, but I, I, it did make a comeback in 200 at least. Yeah, I just I remember all this stuff because I watched it like a million times when I was a kid. I was. Oh yeah. Absolutely fucking obsessed. Yeah, and um, I, I get it. I, I browsed the Homestar Runner fan wiki, which I gotta say is probably the most well-organized fan wiki I've ever been on. The website itself, as I mentioned, is very well-organized. It's actually, like, for an old Flash website, I guess they still update it, but for an old Flash website, it's actually, like, very easy to navigate. Yeah, but they would have, like, whole pages on things that got referenced a lot. Like, there was a page for, like, Batman, and it's like, here's all the cartoons that reference Batman. (laughs) Huh. hmm. Nice. Yeah. (laughs) Very well organized. Yeah, I, I used it a little bit, and it was very helpful while trying to find certain strong bad emails because I could not. Rem- I wanted to find some, and I could not remember them by the titles. Yeah, well, I, I have done that recently as well. Uh, uh, when I was younger, it was very helpful finding the Easter eggs they had because those weren't obvious all the time. Yeah, yeah. the Easter eggs. We haven't talked about the Easter eggs. One you of can like- click on parts of the screen at the end, and an extra clip will play. Yeah, and sometimes in the middle of an episode, you can click on stuff and, like, something will appear on screen briefly. Yeah. I know that you can mess with, like, for for some reason, you can mess up the contrast on Strong Bad's first two computers. Yeah, that's always fun. Yeah. That's a feature that I'm going to miss, because, like, Flash is dying. Very soon we will not have Flash, and you can't do that stuff on YouTube. Unless they, uh, oh, never mind. You can't even do that anymore. I was about to, <laughs> I was about to make a joke saying you click on an annotation and then it just takes you to a version of the video where the screen's a little brighter. <laughs> but nope, you can't do that because annotations aren't a thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. It's like lame though. It's like it, it's taken away features. I don't get it. I don't get why this is the more advanced future we're living in right now. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, obviously, in the grand scheme of things, it's more advanced, but it's just like, I don't know, like, why, I don't know why this, I don't know, I guess, I guess there's just not enough to, su- enough reasons for Flash to be around, like, financially or whatever it is, it's just, yeah, if, uh, if there was, like, a high demand, I'm sure we wouldn't be getting rid of it. Yeah. Um, but it is a shame, because it was, like, you know, re- really, like, Homestar and so much stuff on Newgrounds is, like, really unique in that sense, where there's, like, just little interactive. And some of the episodes ran on in- being interactive. I rewatched the, like, trick-or-treat episode, where you could just, like, get a different reactions based on what you gave them. And Yeah. Yeah, I, like, it's gonna be hard to save that stuff, and, like, all the games. The games are... Some of them are fun. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta imagine that this, someone's gonna be able to create something. That allows them to run. Yeah, I, I feel like there is some market for, like, a Flash archive. Yeah. So that we don't lose all this stuff. Even if it's just something you gotta get, like, download to your computer. Um, yeah, that would all be great. Um, for now, I'm just trying to enjoy it while it lasts. We got it until the end of 2020. Yeah, that's nice. And they are uploading their stuff to YouTube now. And they're, you know, they're putting, like, the Easter eggs at the end of the episodes, too, so... There's a few, like, when they started uploading to YouTube, they were uploading them without the Easter eggs, so... I kind of hope they go back and add those with, like, versions with the Easter eggs, but... I would hope so. What about Teen Girl Squad? (laughs) Oh, Jesus. That's the one I can't really get into. That's, like, the only thing on the website I can't really get into. (laughs) Uh, I loved Teen Girl Squad. <laughs> I drew my own, like, fake version of Teen Girl Squad when I was in elementary. <laughs> yeah, I liked it when I was a kid. Um, revisiting everything on the website, I think I like everything but Teen Girl Squad. Uh, I guess it has been a while since I've revisited any Teen Girl Squad. <laughs> I think there was good stuff in there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I get the appeal of it. Again, as a kid, I thought they were hilarious. It's... You know, I'm never gonna, 
I'm never going <laughs> to critique the idea of doing something new and doing something different on the website. It was another thing that stood out on the site. There was just, there was a lot of different little things on the website, and I appreciate it for that. I feel like the thing I liked about it as a kid, though, was that all the characters would get murdered by the end of the episode. Yeah. And I thought it was really funny to just, like, kill off your characters and then bring them back in the next issue. It wasn't, like, Kenny. It was just every single character was Kenny. Yeah. Or a lot of shows had their Kenny, and including my... I, I had a really shitty animated series that you can still find on YouTube. Where, yeah, like, uh, my friend Austin was our Kenny, and he would die every episode. Because everyone wanted a Kenny in their show. Seriously, so many people wanted to have a fucking Kenny character. Where they would just have a character that died. There's so many Flash series that copied that. Yeah, because it's just funny to, like, kill off one of your characters. Find new creative ways to kill them every time. Yeah. What else is there to talk about with this website? What do you think of the, uh, Flash games? Did you revisit any of those recently? Um, not recently. I... There were some I liked and some I didn't. I was never into, like, the Dungeon Man series. Because it was, like, text-based adventure. Yeah, I tried that one out, and I just couldn't get into it. It's like, A, something I did not like as a child, and B, not a reference I understood. Because, like, in the 80s, that was a thing. They didn't have graphics, so you had a text-based adventure. I enjoy... AI dungeon, which is a new thing, just because there's just, like, so much more that can happen with it. You can get some really funny results, and you, it, because it goes off of, like, an algorithm of what other people are saying and playing in the game, it's actually fun. <laughs> but I think almost any text game, I, I just, aside from this, like, AI dungeon, which has a very specific reason, like, for being good, just of how open it is, I think all of them are really bad. <laughs> Even the ones that try to be funny, I just, I don't, there's never that many choices, and I don't like it. Yeah. Peasant's Quest was also partially text-based. You had to type in what you wanted to do. But I, I played that one a lot. I liked the Trogdor game a lot when I was a kid. I tried replaying it, and it's just like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. For a Flash game, it's pretty solid. For, like, an old Flash game, it's solid. But, yeah, it's not really something I, 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 I can't really picture going back to playing this and trying to beat like me and my cousins trying to beat each other's records and it's just like yeah this is this is never something i would be able to do again I, it's not that fun the stinko man mega man ripoff though was pretty impressive did you ever because there's like uh if you click at the bottom of the screen on the vet electrics logo it takes you to like the Vit Electrics website, and there's more games you can play there. Did not ever do that. There were there were some fun games there. There was uh there was one. It was called Find an Egg and or Where's an Egg, and you play this cop, and you go around and interrogate people to try to find where the egg is. But it's there's like no words. Like even the title screen is like in Russian for some reason. And then you go around and just like click on little pictures of stuff figure out where the egg is and then you can shoot people if you think they have the egg uh-huh and if you have three bullets and if you shoot three people who don't have the egg you go to jail <laughs> but if you shoot the person with the egg they drop the egg and you win are you pardoned if you kill two people and then kill the person with the egg yes all right that's good <laughs> Um, I liked, I, there was a lot of Flash games I liked when I was younger. There was, um, this one called Before the Bomb Goes Off. And it was basically like, if you ever played one of those WarioWare games, you had a bunch of tiny tasks you had to complete in a certain amount of time. And this one was just basically bombs are, a bomb is about to go off and you have to finish what you wanted to do before the world comes to an end. And it was just a bunch of these tasks that you had 10 seconds to complete. And I don't think I ever 100%ed it, but, uh... Not the, maybe I did. I, don't, I actually don't remember it being that hard. It's hard the first time you play, because you don't really know exactly what's going on in each scene. But that one always stood out. There was one Flash game a friend of mine showed me, and part of me wants to say it was on Newgrounds, but I feel like that's wrong. But it was called, like, Lucky Tower or something, and you're, like, this knight trapped at the top of a tower, and you have to open all the right doors to get to the bottom of the tower and escape. And if you open the wrong door, you die in, like, horrific ways every time. That was fun. There was also Super Smash Flash. That was a popular one. <laughs> where it was uh. just Smash Brothers, but, like, made in Flash. And the, they made a sequel, and the sequel actually controls pretty well. 
and they made online play for it, and it just took them a really long time to make it. But the first Super Smash Flash, it's like an admirable project because of just how much effort, clearly how much effort went into it. Um, but it definitely feels like an old Flash game. Yeah. There is a shitload of characters to unlock in it, though. You can play as, like, they have, like, the pretty standard Nintendo characters, but then they threw in, like, a bunch of anime characters. And then they also threw in Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles for some reason. Yeah. I always liked those where they would have, like, unrelated characters in... I mean, now you can, like, mod the game and put characters in. Yeah, Project M was a lot of fun. Play as Woody from Toy Story. The Flash games, I remember, there were a lot that were just, like, a stick figure or just, like, a guy that was just made out of balls. And you yeah. could, like, you would just kill him in various ways. You had, like, all these weapons you could throw at him. Have you ever seen, uh, ever heard of Fancy Pants Adventure? Sounds familiar, but I don't remember ever playing it. I, uh, don't remember it super well. <laughs> but I just remember it. I don't know. Like, that one was pretty popular. Balloon, when I was in high school, Balloon Tower Defense was constantly constantly being played in classrooms with computers when they people weren't supposed to be. Red Beard was another popular Flash game. There was one I would play with my friends called, like, Tanks. Like, it was just called Tanks, and you'd shoot each other. And then you'd play it on your own, and you'd set the AI to, like, really stupid and just nuke the shit out of everyone. Um, one that I really liked that uh, is kind of upset to mention in the world that we live in right now is a game called Pandemic 2. Oh yeah, Pandemic 2. We, we talked about this, right? The other yeah, day. I believe we did. Yeah, gotta pull that up. <laughs> and that was just a game where you made a disease that ended all of that. You like you wanted to end all of humanity. Maybe it's best you don't mention that we're in the middle of the pandemic because, you know, this is going to come out in like, August, September, October, <laughs> and people are going to be like, what? They, they recorded this in April? <laughs> All right, motherfucker. <laughs> I, I, I want to get it on record. This It's it's April 2000. Um, yeah. the, the pandemic we are dealing with is SARS. Um, <laughs> uh, if this doesn't come out in the next 20 years, um, I don't know what Michael's doing. All of this channel is just archived shit. When 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 did SARS happen? I uh, might have the right year. It was two thousand three, or two thousand two. Okay. So that is our derailed segment of the portion of the episode. We just got derailed. Uh, tell me to fuck off. Uh, fuck off. Okay. Um, I'm on the website right now, just like checking to see if there's anything. Else uh, that I wanted to bring up specifically. I mean, there's we could go on for a while, honestly. Puppet stuff. Uh, those were always fun, especially like like they would get Mike and Matt would get like their kids or their nieces and nephews and like have them talk to Homestar or Strong Bad. Yeah, it's cute. We could talk about the home pages. The home pages were always fun because there were like twenty or so different home pages. Yep, there is 26. 26, and then there's like two secret homepages. Uh, yeah, two secret homepages, and then one fake you... homepage. Oh, you can't? I said that you can't get to the museum from the front page anymore. You can, you by clicking on the Homestar logo. Yes. I like um, the click on first time here, it takes you to the introduction video, and something I noticed at the intro video that I don't know if I ever noticed as a kid is I watched it again and I found it, you know, I, I loved that video when I was a kid. But in my memory, because, like, it's just Homestar fucking up the name of the website over and over again. And in my memory, when it, one of them is just, it cuts to Homestar wearing a different costume, and then the person's like, uh, no. And then Homestar's like, why? And I remembered him dressed as a witch. And when I watched it this time, he was dressed as a clown. So I'm like, what, well, what the fuck? So I just reloaded it. And yeah, the costume changes every single time. And that's a fun detail. That's that's what I'm talking about with it kind of creating like a different experience. It's just like so many little things. Yeah, there there were one or two cartoons where they did that, where like depending on how it loaded, they would play a slightly different version. Yeah, that's just like, that's extra effort put in where they didn't really need to. And I can appreciate it for that. I, I'm seeing on the menu right now, it's like the kind of like the anime page. Um, it shows the stick. <laughs> That's something I forgot about. I love, like, that's where they, they meet. There's just a stick in the ground. 
the one where cheat go, the cheat goes missing. And they're like strong ones. Like what part of me that we're meeting at the stick that he not understand? Just, I love that. That's the location for them. And also sometimes they reference the stick as a character. <laughs> like it never does anything, but sometimes they'll just be like, like there's one where like strong bad, just like everyone walks away and strong dad looks at the stick and he's just like, I hate you. The stick. <laughs> it does say at the bottom of the page copyright 2000 to 2010 so do they just uh i guess for a while like maybe they just never changed it because i guess they for a while actually no uh, you know what that's the last that's probably just because that's when the last menu was made hmm. if you click on the zero you can go to the homsar main page oh i see it now what's the other secret one uh, the other secret one is you have to play one of the games. It's the Homestar Talker, and there's a secret phrase on the Homestar Talker, and it unlocks a Strong Bad Talker, and then there's a secret phrase on that that unlocks a, a Strong Bad main page. <laughs> Tell me what the phrase is. I want to try it. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Pom Pom and Strong Bad are totally going out. There we go. I'm disappointed that they didn't add the three new words <laughs> in the update episode to the talker. Now what do I have Strong Bad say? But Homestar can win the stupid competition. It's astounding that I remember all of this. <laughs> what is it one more time? Can win the stupid contest? Uh, but Homestar can win the stupid competition. The uh, Strong Bad logo replacing the Homestar logo doesn't say museum. Oh, okay, but it is still a museum. I was wondering if it was another surprise. Good stuff, though. Good stuff. There's another one. I forget how you access it, but it has the King of Town, but it just takes you to, like, very special King of Town cartoons and not... It's not, like, a normal main page. Let's talk about some of the, uh smaller characters like the one-offs or maybe they'd re reoccur um like trogdor for example uh, trogdor that, that one where they draw the freaking dragons and <laughs> strong sad like improves on his technique and makes like a really realistic one <laughs> i always found that one really funny just, like strong mad just carves the word dragon into a table <laughs> yeah trogdor became like the runaway hit of the website like yeah sold some merchandise with that yeah i like I, the song was in like guitar hero 2 you could <laughs> play the trogdor song so like that was like their biggest hit like one of the earliest viral videos was just the trogdor cartoon yeah it was definitely one of the first ones i saw i watched it i definitely saw it like day one when i was on the website i mean <laughs> i named my previous channel after trogdor <laughs> <laughs> what was your previous channel's name uh it was burn capital n eight capital r burn in eight r <laughs> nice <laughs> there's that creepy marshmallow character that keeps appearing and stuff marshy the marshmallow <laughs> and and the even creepier gel arshy <laughs> Before I drink 147 glasses of melonade. <laughs> Marin what's it called again? That drink? Melonade. Uh, okay, melonade. I got it right. It's like lemonade, but made of melons. That's another... They kind of did the uh, Homestar has, keeps fucking up his line skit twice, but I like both of them. They switched it up just enough in the second one. Oh, um, hmm. we could talk about the Telltale Games, Homestar Runner games. Did you ever play any of those? Uh... Was this released on consoles or was this on the website? Uh, it was it was on PC and Wii. I remember there being a Wii game. I didn't know if it was like Telltale. I, I couldn't like what what was it? Uh, it was basically like five different little games. They were all point and click adventures. You'd play a strong bad and you'd go through and like. Uh, like in the first one his computer's broke and he has to get his computer repaired and then in one of them he like plays battle of the bands he, he, he's trying to win a battle of the bands i remember the like i never played it but i remember the name being something like strong bad something game for attractive people yeah strong bad's cool game for attractive people got it <laughs> um did it use the same animation of the show or was it more no it was it was 3d so Huh. 
That's weird. I'm gonna look that up right now. Yeah, it was made by Telltale Games, so it's it's pretty fun. I I remember playing the demos over and over again, and then like I had one friend who had the games themselves, and I stayed up like all night playing the games at his house. I wonder if those games are still around. But that's cool. I might have to check this out because it's just like, yeah, like it, it looks like, unless the person who played it just sucks, it looks like there's like two hours worth of material on it. Maybe per episode, two hours per episode, because there's five different episodes. Oh, two hours per ep. Oh, wow. So there's more than two hours worth of stuff on it? Uh, maybe. Hard saying. Offhand. Well, uh, that sounds about right, like two hours per episode. And there's like five of them? Maybe less if you know what you're doing, but if you're just messing around. That's a lot more than I thought it would be. So that's like the most lengthy Homestar Runner stuff out there. It's not just like a Flash game, it's an actual like full-on point-and-click video game that you had to like pay money for. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I'm assuming even though it's like point-and-click, there is like, a lot of uh, dialogue in the game. Yeah. Yeah, and there's, like, there's kind of dialogue trees. They'll be, it'll show, like, so sometimes it'll show you, like, good, strong, bad, and, like, evil, strong, bad, and you have to pick if you want to be nice or mean to someone. This actually seems like a perfect format for it, and even though it's, like, weird that it's in 3D, it actually does not look too off. It's definitely would be better if it was, like, the 2D stuff, but it's not, like, like, like I mean, there's shots where they kind of look 2D. Yeah, part of it, from my memory, I, I don't have it in front of me, but from my memory, they have, like, the, the dark outline around their 3D models. It sort of helps them look more 2D. Yeah, th when you said it looked 3D, I, I was expecting something a lot worse than that. Th these are characters that work better in 2D, though. <laughs> oh, for sure. Alright, well, I guess we're getting close to wrapping this one up. Is there any... I, I guess I have, like, one more question... But is there anything else you want to talk about, Homestar Runner related, before we wrap up? Not offhand. So, out of all the episodes, what are what are some of your favorites? Like, what are your some of if if you're like trying to talk someone into watching it all these years later, which one would you go with? Well, if I'm trying to talk someone into watching it, I probably would show them the like first time here cartoon. Um, uh huh. Commandos in the classroom, I already said, is one of my favorites. As far as strong bad emails, I always liked coloring because it had like a coloring book at the end. Uh, trading cards was fun. Honestly, I liked anything with Limozine. I guess that's that's <laughs> the one thing I should mention before we wrap up is Limozine was a band I absolutely loved when I was young because it was like the first metal rock music I ever really listened to. And I listening back to it now, I'm like, this is terrible. This is, like, not good. I mean, it's it's kind of decent music, but it's not, like, heavy or rock and roll at all. But when I was a kid, I'm like, this is, like, the heaviest shit I've ever listened to. And that's kind of the reason I listen to metal now. It's because of Homestar Runner. <laughs> Homestar Runner has definitely had a big impact on your life. It has had a big impact on my musical taste and my sense of humor, but... Yeah. It's had a big impact on my music musical taste. It's also the reason I listen to They Might Be Giants, because they did a lot of collaborations with They Might Be Giants, which is, uh -huh. like, the opposite end of the rock spectrum from metal, but fuck it, they're good. I like They Might Be Giants. I've seen them in concert. Well, awesome. Yeah, I, uh, Limousine is something that I'm still, like, I gotta see more of, because I couldn't remember that one from when I was younger, and I didn't watch anything yesterday, like, when doing, kind of, like, catching myself up a bit. I should have watched one of those, but I didn't, even though you told me about them. Um, I'll check one of those out later, but, uh... There were two or three really funny fake bands they had, because they had, they had Limousine, who was, like, 80s hair metal, and then they had Tarantula, who was, like, a black metal band. So that's another one I like. one of the first ones I watched that was really funny was called Your Funeral, and it's just, like, Strongbag talks about his funeral, and he says he wants Tarantula to write the song for his funeral. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then there's, like, the rapper PCP. Like, P P E A C Y space P. <laughs> Some Someone talks about, like, doing PCP, and, like, did someone say PCP? I love PCP. 
I think with me, my favorites would probably be the uh, Strong Bad email where his uh, lap year <laughs> 486, I think, gets lapping at. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was uh, a two-parter. Yeah, because the first one, the one before it was called Cliffhanger. <laughs> Yeah, it was like, please resolve all the cliffhangers. And then it's like completely made up cliffhangers that never happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really like, I mentioned before, Bug in the Mouth Disease, I think is a great one. I like Folky Tale, a Folky Tale a lot. Oh yeah, Folky Tale, that's a good one. Uh, honestly, the very recent Mr. Poofers Must Die uh, got a good laugh out of me. Yeah, some of their recent stuff is good. Oh, you know which ones I always loved? The fucking fan costume videos. I like those too, yeah, it's just Strong Bad being mean to fans who send them photos and making fun of what their house looks like. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's that's always fun, because Strong Bad's making fun of real people. Yeah. I like I like that Strong Bad was kind of a mean person. You have to be aware of that if you're going to send an email to Strong Bad that they're, the people who write the show are going to be mean to you. I also, this is kind of a very small one. I do find the 4th of July one where, like, Homestar's carrying around a cardboard cutout of Marzipan and they use the, like, Strong Mad has his handmade, um, homemade fireworks. That one cracks me up. And then, um, I also really like Date Night because I like just, <laughs> I like how Homestar and Strong Bad team up in that one and then when their boat sinks they start singing like they start singing that song together that stuff that 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 also cracks me up Homestar and Marzi Pan's relationship is so weird <laughs> uh but yeah um I, I think that pretty much wraps up everything I have to say about it a uh, great great series uh I think it's I think one of the best things about it is aside from audio quality the old ones hold up just about as well as the new ones do oh yeah um it's been very consistent. There's like there's a slight hill you gotta get. There's like some of the really old ones aren't as good, but once you get into it, 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 most of them are really funny. Like even a lot of the old Tandy stuff is still funny. Yeah, the old stuff is funny too. I, I will say, um, when Homestar's design is just slightly different, like in the Lua episode, Luau episode, he's like a little bit more dry in those episodes. He's not quite as stupid yet, and sh like I I'd say, the characters definitely got funnier over time. Yeah, just because like I don't know, often when an animated series first begins, the characters are a little less expressive because they're still kind of discovering the characters they go through flanderization which can be a good thing or a terrible thing i'd say with home starts a been a good thing and um yeah i just love like it's just it's a compliment both ways like the old episodes had so much effort that they still kind of hold up to this day aside like the audio quality is pretty rough in the old ones but you can yeah. still mostly make out what they're saying i think the songs the old powered by the cheat songs it's Especially, uh, push it to the limit. It's super... To be fair, it's because he's saying a word, a very fucking weird word again in that, so it's hard to understand what he's saying. But, um, the audio quality is rough in some of the really early ones, and it can be a little hard to make out what they're saying sometimes. But, and, like, it, but yeah, it's like a compliment to the old ones, because they, like I said, they kind of just feel like the new ones, both animation-wise and joke-wise, but also the newer ones have been able to recapture it without, um, while still, like, having new material. All right, um, well, thank you so much for coming on, Matt. Do you want to talk about your channel for a second? I mean, I, I guess I've talked about it before, but if you're just joining us, my channel is Matt Presents. I talk about bad movies, and sometimes I talk about other types of movies. Recently, I've started doing a series where I'll, I'll have, like, movie nights with my friends, and then I'll talk about the movies, and I'll tell you what movies I'm showing this week. So, that's fun. Kind of an unscripted thing, but I enjoy doing it. Yep. Matt Presents. And you curse at VeggieTales. Yes. At Matt underscore Presents on Twitter. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to the podcast that updates as frequently as HomestarRunner.com does. Uh, have a good one.